You're listening to the North Parkway Podcast, weekly talks designed to help you take the next step in your spiritual journey. You can learn more about our church at northparkway.org. And if these talks are helpful to you, consider using the link in the description to give. Your financial support helps us continue to make great content. All right, well, that's enough intro. Let's get to today's talk. Your brain is at war with your brain. And that's why it's hard to do the things that you want to do. That's why you end up doing the things that you didn't want to do. And then as soon as you do them, you look and you say, now, why did I just do that? Last week we started uh, what I I told you was going to be a two-piece kind of talk about why you do the things that you end up doing. And uh, and I I told you today we would give you some real-world strategies on how to take charge and start making better decisions. If you're if you missed last week, uh, you guys in the room, you're, I'll give you a quick recap. Uh, but if you're watching online or if you're listening to the podcast, do yourself a favor, pause, go back to last week and watch that one or listen to that one first, and then come right back because this will make more sense. Uh, we talked about how your brain is put together and how that can give you a clue as to uh, your decision making. So I'll pull back out my handy brain uh, diagram here. Your brain is very complex, but it can be sort of broadly categorized into three different groups that handle different levels of function. The, the bottom one here is your brain stem. Uh, your brain stem is the most basic functions keeping you breathing, uh, regulating your body temperature, um, reminding you to uh, keep a steady heartbeat. Uh, We call that the lizard brain because that's about the level of intelligence that uh, the lizard in your backyard or uh, the frogs out by the pond have. Just basic survival. This this middle system, uh, this represents the limbic system in your brain. Uh, We call this the dog brain because this is about um, the extent that most mammals on the planet uh, can think. Uh, The limbic system goes beyond basic functions. And it handles things in your life like emotions, uh, things like desires and cravings and urges. Whenever you follow your heart, you're not following your heart, you're following this part of your brain, okay? This is the sentimental part. This is the part that keeps the Hallmark Channel in business, okay? Aww, that's so sweet, okay? This is, okay, that's the touchy-feely part. And then, and then out here, uh, this, this outer area is the cortex of your brain. Other animals have like a teeny little bit of that. We as humans by far have the most advanced cortex of anything on the planet. And this is what we call the logic brain. Okay, this is the part of your brain that thinks in abstract ways. This is the part that can put yourself into someone else's shoes. Or imagine if I do this today, how is that going to affect me next month? Uh, This is the part that looks at all of the clues and rationally puts together a strategy of how to do the thing that you want to do. And uh, as we we look at all of these three, the way that, the reason I said your brain is at war with your brain is because this piece, the dog brain, uh, the emotional side of you, is the part that research has shown us again and again is largely responsible for human behavior. Most of the time, you don't do what you do based on how logical it is. You do what you do based on how badly your brain and your body is telling you, you really need to do this. It's the reason why we end up eating something and saying, now why did I eat that? Or selling something and saying, why did I sell that? Or slapping someone in the face and saying, now why did I just do that? My face now hurts because they're stronger than I thought. We get ourselves into trouble. And this part of your brain wants what it wants. It issues commands to the logic part and says, hey, go get me some stuff. And what happens is we end up doing things sometimes impulsively and then later on we look and we say, I wish I would have taken a different approach. I read a a post on Reddit yesterday where someone posed this this question. They said, imagine you could go in a time machine and you could be warped back for just a moment to yourself on the first day of school, freshman year of high school. Some of you guys, that wouldn't be so far back. Some of you that, you know, dust off the cobwebs a little bit. Imagine you could go back and you could tell your, your, what, 15 or so, 14, 15-year-old self one thing. 
what would you tell your freshman self? And that all of these different answers. And the way that Reddit works is that uh, people will upvote the most popular comment. Okay? By far, the most popular comment on there was somebody who said, I would tell my freshman year old, I would smack the Twinkie out of their hands and say, stop eating and go to the gym. Okay? All right. Uh, so maybe, maybe not in the fitness level they want to be. And that, well, I, I wish I would have gotten fit when I was young and it was easier. And it made me think, reading all of these different posts, most of the things that people said, if I could go back and tell myself that, most of the things 14, 15 year old them already knew. They already knew that this was not a good idea, but this part was yelling at them. And in the moment, in the moment, this part of your brain is really powerful. It's really loud. It's very persuasive. And, and no matter how much you might realize this is a bad idea, you end up a lot of times doing things you don't want to do because it's so persuasive. I want to talk to you today about how you can leverage the smarts inside of your skull and the spiritual help that you get from God to make better decisions and, and tell this part no. But you have to understand, we want to, we want to set ourselves up to succeed and we need to work smarter, not harder. See, your, your logic part of your brain is never going to win an arm wrestling match with the dog branch. Way too strong. Way too powerful. Way too influential. You're never going to win a shouting match by just shouting louder. The, the way that you're going to lasso your behavior and start making better decisions is by taking advantage of something that this part of your brain does really well. Right? Strategy. It's preparation is thinking ahead. We're going to outsmart it, okay? It's, uh, anybody, any Princess Bride fans? Anybody remember that? Okay? You're not going to beat Andre the Giant in a fist fight. It's just not going to happen. You got to think smarter, right? You got to think smarter. And so we're going to help you think smarter. I'm going to give you some stuff to write down. So if you have notes, if you have fill-in-the-blank notes, you want to use those. If you don't, uh, maybe come back later and write this stuff down because I really think it's going to help you if you keep it in your toolbox. The first one is this. It's very simple. Swap, don't starve. Swap, don't starve. Do we have that up on the screens? Put the, uh, there we go. Anybody remember that moment from Raiders of the Lost Ark? Podcast folks, sorry, you can't see that. Um, that moment where Indiana Jones tries to swap out the little golden idol for the bag of rocks. Okay, you want to swap, not starve. I, I want you to imagine this, okay? Imagine for me for a minute that you love cookies. Love cookies. It's your favorite thing to eat. Some of you guys, that's not hard to imagine. You love, love, love cookies. But you go to the doctor because you realize every time you eat a cookie, you kind of don't feel great. And they run some tests and they say, oh, what, well, Ron, you're gluten intolerant. You have a gluten allergy. And cookies have gluten, right? Am I correct? Okay. All right. So you have, you have two off. The doctor says, Ron, listen, you need to stop eating cookies. It's going to hurt you. It's bad for you. Okay. You have a couple different strategies. One, you could throw all of the cookies you have away and just try really hard not to think about cookies. Or, option two, you could go to a different aisle in Walmart and you could buy yourself gluten-free cookies. I have a package of gluten-free cookies right now. And you know what's amazing is that they taste like cookies. They're sweet and delicious and refreshing. I don't have a problem with gluten, but I kind of like these. So I felt good about this as a sermon illustration. I want you to think, what's going to help you if your goal is don't eat Oreos? What's going to help you more? Emptying your cabinet and being hungry and trying really hard not to eat Oreos or having Oreos that you can eat on deck so when you get that craving, you go eat an Oreo that's healthy for you. Swap. Swap. Swap, don't starve. Listen to, what, listen to what Paul says, okay? This is the guy who wrote, and we talked about it last week, I'm so frustrated because I always do the stuff I don't want to do. I can never do the things I intend to do. This is that guy. Listen to the piece of strategy that the Bible gives us, Romans 6, 12 and 13. Do not let sin control the way you live. 
do not give in to sinful eh, sinful desires, but instead, everybody say instead. instead. That's the pivotal word right there. Instead, give yourselves completely to God. Use your whole body as an instrument to do what's right for the glory of God. Instead. See, too many times, I'll put my signs here where we are. Okay. Too many times as Christians, we want to do the right thing. We believe that we, okay, God, I want to sing this song in church. And the pastor says, I, I do have to. He says, God does care what I do with my life. I need to make better decisions. And so we say, if God says no, I say no. And this is the only thing that we keep in our spiritual toolbox. Just no, 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 no. I'm going to try really hard to say no all of the time. Every time that craving hits, just no. But it's the only thing that we say. If you're trying to eat better, the, the point is not to say, all right, if, if you can't eat certain uh, meats, if you can't eat certain greens, if you can't eat gluten, Alex, I don't want you to starve. Are you starving? No, right? Because you found healthier stuff to eat. This is an absolutely appropriate answer when a craving comes to you that you know you shouldn't do. No is an appropriate answer. But these other ones that we talked about last week are also appropriate. I have a craving. Okay, not yet. I have this thing that I want to do. Okay, but not like this. And, and the thing is, guys, these two, not yet, not like this, are much more powerful. They're much more persuasive. I want you to consider with me. Do we believe, I'm, okay, this is an obvious answer here, not a trick question. Do we believe that God designed your brain chemistry to work the way that it does? Yes. Do we believe that God put the reward cycle, okay, just to, from last week, when the limbic system, the dog brain says, I want cookies, and you eat cookies, it releases this, this chemical cocktail in your brain that makes you happy so that it encourages you to do that behavior again. Do we believe, <clears throat> man, that cookie is really, it's a booby trap. <clears throat> okay, I think we're okay. Do we believe that God created the reward cycle in order to make it hard for you to do the right thing and make temptation better? No. The reward cycle was put in your brain to help you to live a healthy life and to reinforce behaviors that are going to keep you fed and uh, keep you in a tribe of people or in a family of people, keep people around you to help you take action when you need it. But we have a tendency to go about doing that the wrong way. What you need to do is not starve you need to do is swap a bad behavior for something better so two ways we could do that one write this down you need to use this noodle in here that's really good at analytics the 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 crime scene investigator part of your brain you need to find the what in every craving because there's usually a healthier how you need to look for and you you have to study this is a sort of a self-diagnostic piece but if you have those things, and we probably all do, we all know what some of those things are, you probably have those things that you know you have a tendency to fly off the handle whenever you get into a confrontation and get into a shouting match and then your wife's in the other room crying and you're like, oh my goodness, okay, it's like verbal abuse now. Why did I do that? I always intend to start better and I go, okay. You, have, you know what your tendencies are. So, so look and say, all right, so what is it that this thing is really saying I need because there's probably a different way to go about getting what I need that's, that's going to be healthier for me. Okay, you can have resolution in a conversation without shouting. The, the need here is resolution and getting this, this emotional thorn out of my foot. But the how is where it gets broken. Sometimes you have this desire that turns you to sex when what you really just need is companionship. I just need to be around people. I just need someone. I just need to share emotionally. I don't need to share fluids. I just need to share ideas and thoughts. Sometimes, okay, I know we've got like a couple kids in the room. I'm trying here. Sometimes, okay. Sometimes. The, the part of your brain 
that you're wrestling with is the part that sees what somebody else has and says, I deserve that. I should have that. I should have that level of house and car. I should have that kind of spouse. I should have those kind of kids. I should have that position at work. And we struggle, okay? Now, you can go, you can approach that struggle, that desire to fit, okay, what is the what? Let me walk back over here. Sorry, Isaiah, I'm gonna keep you on your toes. What's the what when you're struggling? The what is not, I really need to envy somebody. The what is, I really need to feel satisfied with what I have. So there are two different ways you can go about it. You can, you can try to meet the satisfied with what I have by saying, they took what really deserved to be mine, I need it, I'm gonna go get the credit card and buy it. Or you can say, I'm going to refocus on what I have and find the good in it. I'm gonna invest in the house that I have and make it look better. I'm gonna invest in the spouse that I have and build that relationship. Fertilizer and sprinklers are way cheaper than buying another lawn. Sometimes it's going about it a different way. Swap, don't starve. Here's the other thing you need to know, okay? So that's when temptation comes. You also need to be proactive because, write this down, temptation works best in a vacuum. So you want to stay full on good things, okay? Let's go back to Ron and the cookies. Ron, do you like cookies? Okay, good. Just didn't want to, right? I just picked somebody. Ron and the cookies. Ron is trying not to eat cookies regular cookies because they're bad for him, okay? And he's got some other cookies in the cabinet. But I want you to think, when, if he's, if he's trying not to eat too many cookies, is he going to have an easier time if he just ate a big full meal full of healthy food or if he's trying not to eat anything at all? It's easier to say no when you're full. Easier to say no when you're like, okay, when the, when the server comes by and they're like, hey, would you like to order a chocolate lava cake with that? And you just ate all of the steak. You're like, man, I wish I had room, but I'm going to have to say no. It's easier to say no when you're full. Listen to what Jesus says here. So, and I understand. Here's what's cool about today's talk. I meant to say this earlier. If you're a Christian, this is great news. It's going to help you. If you're not sure if you believe in God at all, but you want to make healthier decisions, this is going to help you. This is just wisdom that we find in this really old book. Jesus said this, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Now this is cool. I, I did a little bit of digging on that word filled this week. And I would always seen it a different way. I had seen it where Jesus says, If you're hungry for righteousness and you're thirsty for righteousness, then you will get some righteousness. Okay, But that's... That's missing a big part of what he says. The word filled here in Greek is kordadzo. And it means, here's, here's the best way to illustrate it. Okay? Anybody like Thanksgiving? Who enjoy? I'm talking about food a lot today. I must be secretly hungry. Okay? You know the feeling when you finish the Thanksgiving meal and you go sit on the couch to watch the Cowboys win. Praise God, hopefully. And you're like, ooh, that was good. Okay, you know that feeling? That, mm, man, I, I wait every year to get mamma's mashed potatoes because they're the bet, okay? That's the word. That's the Greek word. It's not like filled up a cup. It's filled to the point of being satisfied. It was often used to mean filled to the point of sexual satisf satisfaction. Like, I don't have a craving to go do anything else because I've got my needs met. And Jesus said, if you proact, okay, let me paraphrase. If you proactively hunger and thirst, if you put the desire inside of you for the right things, then that will be rewarding in this part of your brain. That will be so rewarding to you that you will feel satisfied. And, but you know, he doesn't, he doesn't specify, but what happens when you're satisfied? You're, you're less likely to go out and crave the bad stuff. If you stay full on the good things, you'll be less likely to choose the bad things. Swap. Don't starve. Here's the other strategy. Write this down. You need to stack the deck. You need to stack the deck like your little brother who keeps losing in Uno, okay? Who goes through and it's like, I'm going to put all of the really good cards, every other one, because it's just the two of us playing all day, right? And you know what I'm talking about, okay? <laughs> stack the deck. I was an older brother. I knew a little bit of sleight of hand. 
I know how this works, okay? Put all the good cards so I get them whenever we hand it out. I don't know why, I just keep getting all the good stuff, okay? You need to stack the deck. You need to play to your strengths. You need to prepare and use, the, use your advantage of logic and strategy over the impulsive part of your brain. Listen to how Jesus talked about handling temptation. And before I read this, just hold on, don't put it up yet. I want you to consider who's talking. This is Jesus of Nazareth. This is the Christ, the chosen one, the Messiah. This is literally God on earth living in a human body like we live. And the disciples come to him and they're like, teach us how to pray because you do it and you're better at it than us. And Jesus shows them, okay, and by, by proxy, us, here's the type of stuff that I pray about. Okay? Listen to how Jesus talks about handling temptation. Matthew 6, 13. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lead us not. Lead us not. So Jesus is saying, he's not, okay, this is what he's not saying. Jesus is not saying, God, strengthen our backbone so that when we charge right through the heat of temptation, we will say no. He said, lead us away from it. This is Christ. Okay, so if he says, God, keep us away from temptation, then I need to avoid temptation and not invade it. Okay? I need to be smarter about it. Here's what you need to do. Okay? Write these three things down. We can put that up on the screens. You have limited power. You have limited willpower reserves. Okay? You need to prepare. And here's what you need to do. You need to avoid, evade, and endure. Now, I put these in order, just like reduce, reuse, recycle. I know some of you guys, they weren't talking about that when you were in school, um, but uh, they, they do it this order. Reduce, did you know this? You probably did. Reduce, reuse, recycle. They always say them in that order. Do you know why? Because that's the order you should try to do them that's best for our resources on the planet. Much better than recycling is to just use less stuff in the first place. Reduce. And much better than recycling is to reuse the same thing so you don't have to take it back to the factory and melt it down. And Recycling is like the last thing before trash. If you want to win more often, if you want to make better decisions more often, you need to identify the stuff that you find yourself doing over and over. And you need to start by avoiding that thing as much as you can. Write this down. Avoid temptation whenever you can. Stay away from it. Well, Pastor Chris, that makes me sound like a weakling. It didn't make Jesus sound like a weakling. How do you pray, Master? Here's how I pray. Father, lead me away from temptation. Okay? There's nothing weak about that. It's smart. Okay? Same God who writes all of the stuff and inspires every word in the Bible, the same God says this in Proverbs 5, 3, 8, talking about how to avoid falling into a trap with uh, lust. He says, for the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey. Okay, sounds good, but you need to stay awake. Verse 8, keep a path far from her. Do not go near the door of her house. Stay far, far away from the things that are going to tempt you to do stuff you don't want to do. Because before the moment, your brain knows, I don't want to do this thing. It, okay? Have you, have, you ever, have you ever come to the end of a relationship and done like a relational autopsy and gone back and said, I should have listened to my head and not my heart so much? Or I, I should have listened to my, my head up here and not anything else that's inspiring me to take action, right? We, there are times you just got to think ahead. You've got to think ahead. If you have a problem with rage and anger, maybe, maybe you need to turn off the, the political news if that's a trigger for you. Maybe you need to just unfollow some of those threads because let's be honest so many of the successful things on there the advertisements they are rage bait can you believe would you can you imagine what they're trying to okay if if 
if that sets you off in the rest of the day, you're just a bear to be around. Just avoid that altogether. Look for the triggers and just walk around them. If, if you used to have a problem with drinking and you always say it's just one drink tonight and it's never just one because one becomes seven before you realize it, don't go out partying with those guys. Don't go out wine tasting with those girls. Don't even walk down the liquor aisle. Avoid it. Avoid it because you have limited resources. Again, you're, you're never going to win a face-to-face, in-the-moment confrontation with that part of your brain all day long. You're going to run out of strength way too fast. Okay. Let me give you another one for free since we're talking about it. Don't get drunk, especially in public, because... Let me get my brain back here. Hang on. Okay? Just, just reason with me. This is bonus content. The more alcohol that you have, the less influential this part of your brain is. Okay? If you want to make better decisions, you won't make better decisions when you're drunk. Just don't. Okay? Especially when you're around the wrong crowd because they're going to, oh, do it, man. (laughs) Yeah, do it, do it. Right? They got the phone out. Not good. Don't do that. Okay? Sometimes you can avoid the fight altogether. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes that person that makes you want to punch them in the face comes to you and you can't get away because you work in the next cubicle or because they sleep in the bed on the top bunk and you're on the bottom, okay? Sometimes you can't. So when you can't avoid, then the next thing is to evade. Put that up. Evade temptation when it comes. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 and 14. God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, okay, you can't avoid them all. When you are, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Therefore, my dear friends, flee from idolatry. Okay? When temptation comes, when you're in that moment, in the moment, the dog brain is really persuasive. It is really loud. The best thing that you can do for yourself is to escape the moment and I know here we are again well I I thought the sword of the spirit was going to cut the temptation down I know but the Bible says when temptation comes it it, let's go back and look at it again all right it does not say when you are tempted God will provide the sword of the spirit to cut temptation in half he says when you're in the heat of temptation God will provide an escape hatch so you can run away until you're thinking clearly again Because in the moment, you want what you want. And after the moment, clarity comes and you realize, that's dumb. I don't want to do that. Sometimes you just need to get out. Sometimes you just need to leave the room or leave the conversation. Sometimes you need to turn off the phone. Sometimes you need to actually get out of the house and go walk around the neighborhood and you calm down and you realize before, listen, husbands and wives, when you start to get that heated moment, the best thing you can do for your relationship is to say, hang on a minute, I can't have this conversation right now. Let me talk to you in an hour. And you go walk around the neighborhood for a little bit, okay? My dad used to go down to the corner and buy a Dr. Pepper, okay? I, I eventually realized dad went to buy a Dr. Pepper so that when he came back, he, was, he, could, he could approach that deal with my mother and not be a hateful person and not injure his bride by his words there's wisdom in going down the street okay leave the moment leave the moment flee okay and uh and while we're on that okay this is a good thing uh literally but also metaphorically okay you need to come up with a good fire escape plan before your house is on fire i have four kids okay every once in a while at least once a year we recap this if there's a fire, here's how you get. You go out this window. We're going to meet out here. Why do we plan ahead? I don't think there's going to be a fire. But if there is, when the house is on fire and smoke's coming through the door, that is a bad time to figure out a plan. Same way with your spiritual life. You need to come up with your fire escape plan. You need to be ready to evade before the temptation comes. Because in the moment, come on. Um, I'm trying to look around the room. Can I say this? All right. Let me not use that word. All right. When you are feeling biologically amorous in a strong way, you're not thinking clearly. 
You need a plan before the hormones kick in so that you know what to do. When your triggers get pulled and you start to say that vicious thing that's going to cut somebody down, you need to think before, before having a fire escape plan, before the house is on fire. As Ethan comes back up, here's the last thing to write down. Sometimes you can't avoid it. And sometimes, no matter how much you try to evade, that escape hatch door is locked. You can't find it. You don't see a way out. That's when you need the strength to endure. Because there will be those times. I'm going to uh, back up. Uh, Danielle, if you can go back to 1 Corinthians 10 on that slide. God says, when you're tempted, he will provide a way out so that you can endure it. There are going to be those times when you just have to hang on. You know, there's, there's no amount of strategy that's always going to give you that one hit kill on the temptation. Sometimes you're, you're going to line up and you're in the perfect play and you still are getting pushed back. You, there are times when you just have to hang on. You have to be tenacious. But the reason that we do all of this other strategy is so that you can limit those times and so that when those times come, you have enough strength to win. Too many times, Christian, and this has been me? Man, this has been a lot of my life. If I don't pay attention, this continues to be me sometimes. Too many Christians, they take the approach where they are starving in all of their, all of their mental, I need this, all, all of their reward cycle stuff. They are starving. And a temptation comes, and they go straight to this piece, endure. God said, I just have to say no. I'm just going to hang on. I'm just going to hang on. And they lose. It's a terrible strategy. And they lose and they lose and they lose until they say, I am a loser. I can't do this. I stink. It doesn't work. I will, never, I will never be able to do what I need to do. You need to set yourself up for success. You need to work smarter, not harder and and i know i know i know because as i was preparing this i was thinking this and probably you are too we're pentecostals we believe in the power of prayer we believe in the power of the holy spirit living this life with us and empowering us to do the right thing okay and doesn't the bible say chris resist the devil and he will flee yes and what i'm telling you is this is how we do that by preparing The dog brain, the craving, the urging, the sin nature, the flesh. That is very powerful in the moment. And let me just tell you, if you wait for that moment to ask for the Holy Spirit's help, you will get run over. You got to think ahead. You got to prepare for it. That's why Jesus said, lead me away from temptation, Lord. Keep me away from this. Here's the good news. We said this last week, and I want to read it again, because you need to hear this. You, if, you're, if you're struggling, if you're struggling with substance and you can't get out, if you're struggling with lust and you can't get out, if you're struggling with anger, if you're struggling with gossip, whatever it is, and you can't get out, Romans 8, 12, and 13 says, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do. You don't have to do it. And verse 13, if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live. And what I'm telling you today is don't wait until the moment to call on the power of the Spirit to put to death those things. Don't wait until it's too late. Don't wait until you're struggling to come up with a plan. Don't wait. Don't march right through and say, I have the spirit. I can still watch this show. You shouldn't. We're, we're Pentecostal people, okay? And I believe when we have our times, we meet together, there are times. Anybody from the leadership team will hear me because I pray this every week. Lord, we have what we believe is a plan from you. We have what we believe is your strategy for today. But if anything in that needs to change, we're listening and we're open in the moment to change whatever we're doing in here to fit what God needs. 
But if God can speak to us clearly on Sunday, he can speak to us clearly on Tuesday. He could speak to us clearly six months ago to prepare us for where he wants us to be. And I want you guys to win. And you're not always going to win. You're not always going to get it right. Sometimes you're going to plan ahead and you're still going to fail. But if you do this stuff, you will win more often. And when you start winning, you start building momentum and you start getting stronger. And the neural pathways that are rewarding good behavior get stronger in you and you find better ways to approach the cravings that come into you and you start to swap behaviors that are self-destructive with behaviors that are building you up behaviors that are tearing your family down with things that are adding value to them and you start fighting when you're full of good instead of starving you win more when you stack the deck and set yourself up and you know your response is ready when that thing comes because it's come the last six weeks and it's going to come again you win more and I want you to win more and God wants you to win more so think smarter not harder and you can make better decisions hey this is Pastor Chris again thanks for listening if today's talk was helpful in your spiritual life odds are there's someone you know who could benefit from it take a minute right now to share it with them And if you live in the area, come try out a service in person because church is more fun with friends. See you next time.